Wiesman Fault Code F2. My name's Alan Hart, and today we've been called out to a Wiesman Vitadens 100, and it's got an F2 boiler fault. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at that, we'll strip it down, and we'll see what the problem is, and we'll we'll sort that out for a customer. After that, we've also got a Wiesman, and it's got an F4 fault code. So we'll, we'll have a look at that one as well. Let's go and have a look. So we've got a Wiesman Vitadens 100, and it's a WB1C 30 kilowatt. And this is a combi boiler, and it's got an F2 boiler fault. So what we're going to do to start with, first of all, we're going to take a water sample. And as you can see here, I'm just draining the water from the top of the heat exchanger. And the water is really, really mucky because the water is so mucky in the heating system. We're just going to drain it all down and we're going to check the hoses and check the plate heat exchanger. Once you've drained the pressure out of the boiler and you may do that underneath just take the pressure out you could you could isolate it you could turn the flow and return off you could drain the boiler and once you've took the pressure out of the boiler you can then check the hoses and all you need to do is just squeeze them just gently don't start crushing them too much if you crush them a lot if if they're rock hard then all the muck will go into into the boiler um, into the plate and bits so you want to um, just be careful with them hoses so what we're going to do now i'm going to take the plate heat exchanger out we're going to take the hoses out and we're going to we're going to flush this through the biggest problem with these is is muck in the heating system installers not flushing them correctly when they're installed this is the hose if you're going to take a case off a boiler you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so so I'm just squeezing the hose there to check them. Can't really hear this on camera, but this it's all full. It's all full and coated in there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this heat exchanger out on this. I'm gonna put some new hoses on. And I'm going to clean all the heat exchanger out. I'm going to put some new hoses on. On this. Because customers had a lot of problems. So I'm just going to put some new hoses in. And what I've done there, just disconnected the flue off the top of the boiler. Lifted it up out of way. And then I'm going to undo. There's a bolt back there. It's a bit awkward to see. And one on that side, and then one there. And I've just disconnected the hoses. I'm just going to disconnect that one again. And then I'm going to lift this heat exchanger out. They are quite heavy, these. I'm also going to clean the plate heat exchanger out on this as well. Well, it's out. Do a really, really good job for a customer. So I've removed the main heat exchanger and what I'm going to do now is just change the hoses over. It's not a bad job really, it's quite quite easy to do. Just before we lift this plate out, I don't know if you can see there, I can see all them flakes that are in the plate. So the plate is definitely blocked on this. It's a little bit hard to see in there, but there's loads and loads of flakes. Loads of flakes. A mock in there. Really bad. I've connected this onto outside tap now and i'm going to turn it on and we'll see what happens you see all there all black flakes coming out loads of them it's 
So obviously they were all blocking that plate heat exchanger. I'm going to turn this on full now. I can just let that flow through. You can see there, silk flakes. Loads and loads of them. Obviously I'm going to wash all this up after. But that's all muck coming out of the plate. And if I just tap it, you can see as I tap it, more and more it's coming out. An all top flow through the plate. It's getting greater. Seat flow right now through there. It's coming through a lot faster than it was before. I've just got some chemicals in there now, cleaning that out. Don't know if you can see it's smoking. Always remember, if you're gonna work on a gas boiler, you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so, and you need all the testing equipment so that when you do disturb any of the seals or the gas lines, that you can test them all afterwards. So it's very, very important that we do not do DIY with gas. So that was the F2 fault code for the Wiesmann boiler. I did add some clips in from some other boilers that I've been on just because it just so that I could show you a bit easier um, so the fault is normally from from what I've what I've experienced is you go to them um, the system is normally quite mucky sometimes it's not mucky sometimes it's clean but normally it's quite mucky and the hoses normally the hoses are rock hard so you took the pressure out of the boiler and the hoses are rock hard and they coat with the magnetite and then when you look at the plate heat exchanger, you see the plate heat exchanger is also full of, of, of magnetite sludge flakes of muck as well. Um, so that's the fault on that. So normally you'd need to take the plate heat exchanger out. You'd need to at very least try and squeeze and get as much of that out of the hoses as possible. Because what you can do, you could put a new plate heat exchanger in and within a few days or even a few hours sometimes, the muck from the hoses can go back into the new, the brand new plate. And on one of them jobs there that I'd just been to, the customer had had, I think they'd had two or three plates already from, from another company. And, and obviously I've been now, I've, I've cleaned up, well I, I changed new hoses in that one and uh, I've cleaned the plate out. And it'll be it'll be great it'll be great now for for a long time. And if they have any issues again, I can just go quickly back and just clean clean the plate out. Um, but th they shouldn't have no issues with that now. Uh, we also clean the system on that at the same time, just to make sure that no muck and sludge is going to get into into them again. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions on that on an F two fault, please ask them in the comments below, and I'll I'll try my best to answer them best I can. What I'm going to do now, I've just got some, a few little, just a few pictures from an F4 fault that I went to. I just thought I'd just add this in because it's it's really interesting this. I'll just show you this now. So this boiler is a Wiesmann Vitadens 222 and it's actually got a blocked condensate. So the pipe for the condensate is totally blocked and it's all backed up into the boiler. So it just shows why you need to have the boiler serviced every year and check and, and keep boilers in good condition. So that was a, an F4 fault we was called to on that one and, and it just clearly shows that have the boiler serviced P people abuse the boilers and then when they break down then the, the blimp boilers have been unreliable so have your boiler serviced and, and you won't have the issues you won't have as many issues anyway um, I hope this video has been of some use. If you've got any questions at all, please ask them in comments below. And if possible, I'd really appreciate it if you'd add some comments below and just tell me what type of videos that you like. And if you're an apprentice or, or you're a trainee, bob over to our um, trainee group on Facebook. We've got a little group on there that we're building, um, hopefully to just to give some it back and to help some of you guys that are starting out or maybe you've been an installer and you haven't got that much experience on repairs and things like that and, and we're going to try and do what we can to help and support you.
in that group so yeah if you've got any questions as i say add them below and and um, thank you so much thank you so much for watching